It all started December 10th, 2028, when NASA started Hyperion, the first manned mission to Mars. A small three-person crew consisting of three astronauts. Captain Carl Douglas, Lieutenant Sarah O'Brien, and Lieutenant Michael Stewart had landed on the planet. At first, it was what you would expect, nothing but lifeless desert. For the first day, it seemed hopeless, with not a sign that anything we hadn't already learned from probes had been found. But the next day, Lieutenant O'Brien claimed she started hearing noises from a nearby cave-like formation. Soon, Captain Douglas and Lieutenant Stewart also heard it, and the team proceeded to head to the cave. At first it seemed like nothing but mundane geological phenomena, like continental drift, but then they noticed that it seemed like the cave was getting warmer and warmer. And that's when they found it, a strange orange slime covering the walls. They collected samples of it, but they knew whatever it was, it meant one thing, life even in just a microbiotic state, did exist on the planet. They wanted to return to the ship right then and there to tell everyone else the good news, but then they heard more noises, like clicks. And that's when they saw them, little tiny blue lights. The team investigated and discovered that the lights were some type of creature that at best, could be described as some strange crossbreed between an anemone and a dragonfly with maybe a little bit of dandelion. They weren't huge or scary, if anything, they were more afraid of the team than the other way around. And as soon as they saw the lights from the astronauts' spacesuits, they swarmed away as fast as they could, deeper into the cave. The three of them, followed the strange creatures, and as they ventured deeper and deeper, it seemed like the cavern was getting bigger and bigger, until they found themselves coming out of the bottom of some strange underground canyon, and into some strange underground mountainous area. They noticed along with the creatures was some underground river, and some more strange creatures that looked like a cross between trees and insects eating plants like Venus flytraps mixed with frogs, and pitcher plants mixed with frilled lizards eating the earlier creatures. Soon, they noticed an entire underground ecosystem with all sorts of strange creatures that at best could be described as a cross between creatures from Earth mixed with other creatures if they didn't look completely unknown. Strange mammal-like beings that seemed to have trunks, flippers, and pouches all at once. Strange rocks that turned out to be geometric-shaped urchin-like creatures. But soon, that's when they heard them. Two equally horrifying screams. One was the highest-pitched shrill chirp or squawk. They had ever heard while in contrast, the other was the lowest haunting sound moan that at best could be described as the noise the ghost of a blue whale would make. Their curiosity got the better of them, and as they followed the source of the noise, that's when they found something that chilled them to the bone. Down in the deepest canyon, in the caverns, were two creatures. Both were equally large, somewhere between 50 to 100 feet tall, and one resembled the black or dark blue giant turtle, but with multiple eyes, with four arms and two legs, and it looked like it had electricity surging through its body, while the other creature resembled what could only be described as some red dragon with four wings, eyes along its neck and body and four legs. 
and it had two arms that each looked like a scythe with some organ that looked like an organic gun barrel. The black turtle creature focused its electricity into a large ball and fired it at the red dragon, which looked hurt, but rather than scared off, simply looked angrier and revealed the purpose of its strange organs when it fired what looked like small but relentless streams of plasma needles on the black turtle, burning its body. It seemed like that was it for the black turtle when they saw it slither out of its shell and reveal that it was really some eel or snake-like being, and its limbs were merely part of its shell. The black eel-like creature then coiled around the red dragon and electrocuted it to death. It then proceeded to devour the dragon's corpse. The three astronauts then proceeded to run as fast as they could before the black snake could find them. It seemed like forever but soon they found the cave they first entered. They ran as fast as they could to the surface. The astronauts made it to the surface where they ran back to the ship. After a couple of days, the mission was deemed a success, and the team returned to Earth. NASA reviewed the footage and studied the samples. NASA scientists determined that the orange slime was some strange bacteria-like microbe and that the creatures on Mars must have evolved from it the same way life on Earth did. It was debated if NASA should inform the people about what had happened until they saw the footage of the giant creature on Mars and felt that even if man could colonize Mars, it might have been only when, not if they would find us. And who knows if those things eat each other, what would they do with us? Ultimately, it was decided that the risks of colonizing Mars outweighed the benefits. However, that still left one problem. Should they tell the public the truth about what happened no matter how strange? No, there was no way humanity should know what happened it was just too horrifying to know what beings were living on Mars. So, they hired a small team of filmmakers under the pretense that they were filming a reenactment of the existing mission that would be used in TV specials and documentaries. They told the filmmakers and actors that the mission was your typical mission, that nothing out of the ordinary happened, and that Mars really was the dead world they all thought it was. They then proceeded to air the fake diversion of the mission as the real thing. And no one, not even the people who helped make it, knew better. Eventually, a few crazies got lucky and noticed the fakery. But even they simply believed that the mission was faked and that the technology to go to Mars didn't exist yet. But that, you see, was the brilliant part. Everyone knew there was a mission, but only saw the faked version. And those who knew it was fake didn't believe there was a mission in the first place. After all, why would they fake it if there was a real one? The autumn leaves were orange and red, and danced in the cool breeze as the sun quickly disappeared under cloud cover. The days were getting shorter and shorter, and I knew in time that winter would set in, and I would have to spend most of my time indoors. I hated spending all my time inside, all winter, and I wanted to get out and do things. I mean, really, just anything. So, high school just let out for fall break, and I never had anything to do over the breaks that we had, but I had an idea of what to do over break this time. I decided that I was going to go to this abandoned shack that I had come across while hiking in the woods one day. The shack, while not completely dilapidated, 
was still left to abandon. It was surrounded by bushes and trees and all sort of ivy crawled up the outside walls. Luckily for me, it was only a few mile hike from my house into the woods. I wanted to go in and explore the day I had found it, but I wasn't prepared. Plus, my mom called and said to get home because it was almost time for dinner. After I had dinner, I decided I was going to lie and tell my mom I was going to go to a friend's house for the night, and I grabbed my stuff and headed out the door. Now, I guess I didn't have to do this in hindsight, but I knew it was going to be a tough hike in the woods, and it would probably take a few hours. Come to think of it, I was feeling really good and confident that night, so hiking in the woods at night alone didn't cross my mind as a bad thing. I mean, really, what could happen? So, there I was, walking into the woods, beside my house in the direction of the shack. Now, the shack was a few miles into the woods. It would be a while before I would get there. I got my phone and earbuds out of the bag that I had brought with me. I plugged my headphones in, went to my playlist, and selected the song My World by the Sick Puppies, and I just started singing along as I was walking. And after a few songs later, I was on a deer trail that I sometimes use when I was in these woods, and dark trees hung over my head and a light flicker of lightning danced in between the falling autumn leaves. It was about to rain. As I took my earbuds out of my ears, the wind started to pick up, stripping the trees of more blood-red leaves. A few more minutes later, the wind died down, and a light drizzle started to fall from the sky. I was still in a good mood, however. Nothing was going to stop me from going on an adventure. Surprisingly, the rest of the walk was relatively relaxing. The rain stopped, and it turned into a calm evening. A few steps after looking at my phone's Google Map app, I heard an unusual cry. A shrill screeching that sounded similar to that of a fox. However, it had a baritone undertone to it, so I knew instantly it wasn't one. A little while later, I saw the tire that I saw when I first came across the shack, so I knew I was close. A few minutes passed, and I found an old gravel trail that was probably used as some sort of walkway when the house was lived in years ago. From there, the abandoned house came into view. I held up my mag light to the ancient structure. Ah, just as I remembered it. Gray walls covered with dying ivy, a rusting tin roof, and warped glass windows. I walked up to the door, and I knocked first just in case, even though I knew it was vacant. I got no answer so I grabbed the knob, slammed my body into the door to bust it open, and the wood was so old and rotted that it wasn't hard to break open and I just walked in. The place looked like it hadn't been touched in years, and I began looking around it. There was a stove in the kitchen, and a couch in the living room, and three other rooms. There appeared to be decayed food on the floor of the kitchen, and the smell just made me want to vomit, but I continued looking. I heard the sound of a twig breaking, but I brushed it off, thinking it was probably just an animal or that maybe I just stepped on something. So, I went into one of the three other rooms. It was a bedroom and it was rather well maintained. The bed and closet were still there, the doors of the closet were still intact, although they had cracks in them. The house was surprisingly kept well on the inside. Maybe the decay of the outside 
hadn't touched the inside after all these years. It did smell really bad, though, like an animal carcass on the side of the road, that moldy, earthy, mineral smell. Not that I go around smelling animal carcasses or anything, but there was this one time. Anyway, I digress. There was one thing that surprised me about the bedroom. There was a faded stain on the floor, and at the time I thought, well, this shack is old, so the roof probably leaks when it rains, so it was probably just a water stain, and the rust from the roof probably just stained it red. Just when I had that thought, I heard something walk into the house. I thought it was probably just another animal, but then I heard a faint cough. I knew instantly right then and there that it was a person. I freaked out and quietly got into the closet and gently closed the door. There was a horrible smell in the closet. I looked down, searching for the cause of the smell. There was a dead deer with its head cut off, and I really couldn't tell at the time, but something else was attached to it. I was stuck in there, and the silence was almost unbearable. It was so quiet that I could hear maggots writhing in the belly of the deer. I tried to keep calm and swallow the vomit that made its way into my throat, and that's when I heard the footsteps. It sounded like they weren't too far from the room that I was in. Whatever it was, was dragging something heavy, and I could tell that they were struggling by the way they were breathing and heaving. The footsteps and dragging noises finally came to a stop, only a few feet outside of the closet that I was hiding in. I heard it moan and heave something onto the bed. The bed creaked with the weight placed on it. It took a little time, but I found a crack in the closet door, and I peeked through it to witness what I assumed was a body, but I couldn't really tell. It looked like human flesh with hair, but it was all mangled and distorted. It finally opened a hole, right next to a hair patch, and let out the same scream that I heard in the woods earlier. I gasped when I got to finally see the man next to this gelatinous, flesh creature. He was a huge monstrosity of a man, with patches of hair missing from his head and a gigantic knife in his hand. He slowly raised the knife to his other arm and cut himself deep, screaming in agony as he did so. He raised his bleeding arm and flexed, blood squirting at the screeching mass of flesh on the bed. And suddenly, a blue veiny tongue stuck out of the creature on the bed, and it started to lick up the blood. The man that was standing beside the creature eventually collapsed, and that's when I decided to run out of there. I ran past the passed out man on the ground, not even bothering to look at the grotesque creature on the bed. I slammed through the front door and down the gravel path as fast as I have ever ran in my entire life. I eventually made it home running almost the entire time. I had marks and scratches on my face and hands where twigs and bushes hit me on the run back. And out of breath, I opened the back door to my house. And to my surprise, the police were sitting in the kitchen, talking with my mother. Apparently, my mom called my friend's house after trying to get a hold of me on my cell phone. My friend basically ratted me out 
saying I wasn't with her, and my mom got really worried and called the police. I told them about the shack that I ventured out to, and they went out to check it. They found the shack, and they searched it, but they didn't find the man on the floor, or any creature or anything on the bed. They did find, however, a large amount of blood on the bed, and a decaying deer corpse with a human head attached to it in the closet. They spent weeks at that shack in the woods behind my house, recovering 15 bodies altogether. They were everywhere in the rooms I didn't go into. They were in the walls. They were even under the floorboards. But all those bodies didn't scare me one bit, and perhaps I'm a bit of a psychopath for not being scared. Or perhaps I'm scared of that flesh monster and its blood bag still roaming the woods behind my house. <laughs>